Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing four exam questions for you in two different videos here and I've selected questions that are all from the new specification style. You can access loads more of these questions if you want to go to the old modules. This would all be from module C2, if that's helpful. Okay, so let's get started. So here we've got a circle with the centre at minus 2, 6 and then this point 10, 11 is on the circle. And the first thing that it wants us to do is to show that the circle also passes through the point 10, 1. So if you want to have a go at doing this question yourself, you can pause the video here and have a go. Um, and then you can see how you did um, according to how I do it. So I think when I look at part A of this question, that I would like some more information about this circle. So actually, I think if I can work out what the equation of the circle is, if I can work that out, then I can check if 10, 1 is on there, if 10, 1 satisfies the equation. So let's get started. So to find the equation of a circle, I need two things. I need the centre and I need the radius. Well, I've clearly, clearly already got the centre, so I'm just going to think about what a rough idea of this diagram is. They've told me the centre and they've said it passes through a point 10, 11. So I have got here, I just want to find out the distance between those two things to find out what the radius is. So the radius would be the square root of the differences between the x ones. So we've got 10 and minus 2, so the difference is 12. And the difference between the y ones is 5. So 12 squared plus 5 squared, that's 144 plus 25. That's the square root of 169, which is actually 13. But I know in a second I'm going to be doing r squared, so I might as well just leave it as the square root of 169. So this must mean that the equation of the circle is x plus 2, because of the centre being minus 2, 6, squared, plus y minus 6 squared equals 169. So what I need to do now is I need to check. I'm going to substitute in x equals 10, and that's from here, and y equals 1. So I get 10 plus 2 squared plus 1 minus 6 squared. So that's 12 squared plus minus 5 squared, which we can clearly see is going to be 169. So we do need to have a concluding statement. So we should say this shows that 10, 1 is on the circle. The pass is, is the circle passes through that point. OK, part B of the question. The tangent to the circle at the point 10, 11 meets the y-axis at the point P. And the tangent at the point 10, 1 meets the y-axis at the point Q. Show that the distance PQ is 58, explaining your method clearly. OK, so really what we're trying to do is we're finding the distance PQ. Let's actually write down what we're going to try and do in part B. So the aim is to find out what the distance PQ is. So if I want to do what that is, I'm obviously going to need to find out what P is, and I'm going to need to find out what Q is. Well, P is where it crosses the y-axis. And if it's crossing the y-axis, hopefully we know that this is when x is equal to 0. And again, for this one, it's crossing the y-axis, so it's when x is equal to 0. So we're going to find Q by making x equal 0, and we're going to find P by making x equal 0. But what is crossing the axis? Well, it is the tangent. So we're going to have to find the tangent. We're going to need to find the tangent at P. And we're going to need to find the tangent at Q. So let's think about a diagram. And that might make help us think of what some of our initial steps are going to be. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfectly drawn diagram. So my centre is at minus 2, 6. And we've got two points. So I'm going to put them roughly in the right place, but it doesn't really matter if they're not in the perfect place. I'll tell you what, this is such a bad circle. I am going to draw it again because it's just so bad. OK, is it going to be any better? Oh my God, not really. I'm not good at drawing circles. OK, um, and we've got the two points, P and Q. P, I think they have said, is 10, it's, sorry, not P and Q, but the points are 10, 11 and 10, 1. So 
we're actually going to be at the same um, x direction. So we've got 10, 11, and then another one would actually technically be directly underneath it as 10, 1. And the equations are going to try and find out, we want to find out the equation of these tangents. So I'll do one tangent in red, and I'll do another tangent in purple. So I've said tangent at p and tangent at q, but that's not actually what we're doing here, is it? We're actually going to be finding the tangent at 10, 1. And in red, the tangent at 10, 11. And I guess in order to do that, we need to find the gradient of the first radius, which I'm going to call this one, R1. And we also need to find the gradient of the second radius. And the reason we're going to need to do that is because we know that the tangents are perpendicular to the radius. So we've got our list of things to do now. And eventually what we're going to do, I haven't drawn the axes in here, but the axes are actually somewhere over here. We're going to find out where does it cross the axes and then try and find out what that distance is. I personally find that axis gets in the way. OK, I need to speed up a bit because I always take too long on these. I'm going to start off by finding the gradient R1. So I'm going to call that the gradient of R1. And I'm going to be concentrating on this one and this one here. That's going to be the change in y is 11 minus 6, and the change in x is 10 minus minus 2, so 10 plus 2. So that is 11 minus 6 is 5, 10 plus 2 is 12. So therefore, the gradient of the perpendicular is going to be minus 12 over 5. So now, if we're going to be thinking about the equation of the red tangent, which I'm going to just write the word tangent in red, and that's the one that's actually passing through. So we've got that the gradient is minus 12 over 5, and the point it's passing through is 10, 11. It would just be y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually make this y equals. But remember what we're trying to find here. We're just trying to find out um, where it crosses the y-axis. I just want to remind myself, 10, 11 is the one that passes at p. OK, so to find where line crosses the y-axis, we just make x equal 0. And we can go straight into that equation. So we get my y minus 11 equals minus 12 over 5 multiplied by minus 10. OK, so I'm just going to put that in my calculator. So that's minus 12 over 5 times by 10 is minus 24. And from the left hand side, I'm going to be adding on 11. So y is equal to minus 13. So that means that p is minus 0 minus 13. OK, we have now done gradient of r1, we found its tangent, and we have found out uh, where it crosses the axis. So we found out what p is. I'm just going to block this off, and I'm going to do a similar thing. So I'm now going to do the gradient of r2, which is going to be really, really similar, but I'm going to be using uh, this point down here. I'm going to be doing 10, 1 instead. So the change in y is 1 minus 6, and the change in x is 10 minus minus 2, or 10 plus 2. So you get minus 5 over 12. It's following the same pattern here, and it's not surprising because they're um, they're actually in line like this, that we've got these similar gradients. But we're going to do the gradient of the perpendicular is going to be 12 over 5. We've done the negative reciprocal. And we know that it's passing through a point 10, 1. So the equation of the purple tangent, let's go back to my purple colour. Is just going to be y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. And we're going to go straight in to say that x is equal to 0 to find out where it crosses. So if x is equal to 0, you get y minus 1 equals 12 fifths multiplied by minus 10. So that's 12 fifths multiplied by minus 10 plus 1 you get that y is equal to minus 23. Hence, the q coordinate is 0, minus 23. So now that we have this coordinate as p and this coordinate as q, we can now say that the distance pq is clearly just the distance between um, 
these two things here. I think I've made a mistake. Why did I make the mistake? Did I do this calculation correct? Because it doesn't seem to come up to 38. Let's double check this working out that I've got over here. I don't think I've done this correctly. So we had minus 12 over 5 multiplied by minus 10 is 24 plus the 11. So it should have been 35. So I made a mistake over here. Easy to make these mistakes. So let's just quickly do that again. It would be y minus 11 equals minus 12 over 5 multiplied by minus 10. So we got that y was equal to 35, which meant that p was 0, 35. Good job I spotted that before it was too late. So the distance pq is just clearly the 35 from this bit and the 23 from this bit. So we get 58, which was the distance they were looking for. If you can't quite spot why that's the distance is, well, p is up here, 0, 35, and q is all the way down here with 0, minus 23. So this distance is 35, and this distance is 23, which is why I've just added them together to get that total distance. Okay, sorry for making that mistake there. Hopefully you can forgive me and we finished off all of these things here as well. So it's often quite good to write a strategy of what you're going to do in a question. And just to double check the mark scheme, although I guess it's kind of obvious because it was a show that question and another show that question, just in case you wanted to pause and read through the mark scheme, you can see where the marks are all allocated here. OK, I'm going to do one more question and then I'll pause the video before going on to the next set of questions. So here we've got a circle with a particular centre. Remember, you can pause the video and try it yourself. And we've been told that this point lies on C and we just want to find an equation for the circle. So. If I draw a sketch, I like to draw a sketch for this just to think about what's going on. I've got the centre of the circle, which is 2, 5, and they've told me a point over here is minus 2, 3. Now, if you're trying to find an equation for the circle, we need to know the centre and we need to know the radius. But we already know the centre, so what we're actually going to do here is work out the radius. Now, the radius for this circle is going to be the square root of the differences between the x coordinates. So that's the 2 and the minus 2, which is 4 squared, and the difference between the y coordinates squared, which is 2 squared. So the r is the square root of 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 20. No point even putting that on the calculator because now I'm going to be um, squaring it, aren't I? So my equation for the circle is just going to be x minus 2 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals r squared, which is 20. So we've done that first part of the question and put it all together. Now, part B of the question says that the line L is the tangent at the point P. And remember, the point P is minus 2, 3. Then, somewhere else, it says that the point Q lies on L, and we just want to find out what K is. So I'm going to draw a non-accurate diagram, just like this first diagram I drew over here was not accurate. I'm just drawing something to help me visualise what is going on. So I've got that the centre is 2, 5. I've got that the point P is minus 2, 3. And they talked about a tangent to this point P. So I'm going to draw on here a tangent. And again, I don't know where point Q is. It doesn't really matter to me because it's just a sketch to help me visualise it. I then got that Q lies on the red line like this, OK? So um, if I first of all want to start off by using some properties about tangents and radiuses, and the property I'm going to use is that they are perpendicular. So the gradient of the radius is going to be the change in Y. So I'm actually going to do these ones minus these ones. So the change in Y is 5 minus 3. And the change in x is 2 minus minus 2, which is 2 plus 2. So that's 2 over 4, or a half. Now this means that the gradient of the tangent is the negative reciprocal, which is minus 2. So I'm now going to come up with the equation of the tangent. OK, I'm going to do the equation of the tangent, which passes through the point minus, three, minus 2, 3. Let me get an extra page in there because I think I might need it. So the equation of the tangent will be y minus y1, which is the 3, equals m brackets x minus um, x1. It's, a, it's actually going to become x plus 2. It's going to come straight down here. Um, 
Now, I actually don't even know if I need to rearrange anything because I want to find out what k is. Now, because this point here lies on this line here, I should just be able to substitute in that x is 2 from this coordinate and that y is k. If I substitute those straight into this, I'm going to just be able to solve the equation because I know that they must satisfy that equation that I've highlighted in yellow. So I get that k minus 3 equals minus 2. Well, x is now 2, so I have 2 plus 2. So k minus 3 equals minus 2 multiplied by 4, or k minus 3 is equal to minus 8. So k is equal to minus 8 plus 3, which is minus 5. So I think this one was probably a bit easier than the previous question. I'm just going to show you the mark scheme. So we did come up with this for our um, equation of the circle, and we did come up that k was equal to minus 5. And they've done the same pattern. They found the gradient of the radius. Then they found the equation of the line in a sort of a weird way that I wouldn't have done. We would do it the way that I had done it. Um, they've actually said that it needs to have this correct form of the line, but it doesn't need to be this. Whatever we wrote at this stage here in yellow would also get you the accuracy mark there because it is still a correct equation of the line. And then just substituting in x equals 2 to find k. OK, so I'm going to pause the video there and just do two more exam questions on this. And then we're done on chapter six.